Octoptaradroids, or tridroids as they were commonly known, were lethal separatist units, coming in a vast range of sizes, playing roles in numerous battles across the galaxy on behalf of the Separatist Alliance. These units also held another secret, however, that made them even more lethal than most others, even after being defeated. But what's the story behind these lethal droids? So, these droids were originally created by the Techno Union. They had three long legs supporting a rather large bulbous head, and in between those legs they had three sensors accompanied by large heavy blaster cannons. And this made them very effective, both defensively and even offensively, as they were relatively impossible to sneak up on because they had a line of sight in every direction and towered above most foes. Their long limbs even allowed them to climb over difficult terrain, and in some cases they were able to climb and hang from vertical surfaces with little hindrance. Now, these droids came in two main sizes, the standard which measured only 3.6 metres from the ground and were mostly just used as a turret platform. Or we have the Magna version, which we're probably a lot more familiar with, and these measured just shy of 15 metres from the ground. These were far more offensive. Despite being slow, their height and long-range laser cannons, and in some cases missile launchers, made them very effective at fighting almost anywhere. It really was just a portable defence platform. It's also important to remember that these are Class 4 battle droids, which makes them incredibly smart on a similar level to droid commandos, meaning that they actively are devising the best way to attack an enemy, either through ambush or direct assault. Now, as for their terrifying secret weapon that's built into some of these units, it really is a testament to the cold-hearted minds that built these droids. Obviously, these droids have a pretty clear weakness. They could easily be tipped. Not only this, but the exposed legs were relatively frail, and a direct hit by something that packed a fair punch, such as a rocket launcher or artillery shell, would drop these lethal droids with ease, making them basically ineffective. And from this is where the minds of the Techno Union decided to fill their bulbous heads with an airborne virus or pathogen. By holding these viruses in gas form in their heads, it meant that when the droid fell, it would likely begin to leak out, slowly but surely. Now, the Separatist forces, being mostly droids, would be fine. However, Republic troops approaching would quickly become infected. This meant that once one of these droids that had been loaded with the virus had been taken down, the area around it would have to be cordoned off until the airborne virus dissipated. And this would greatly hinder Republic troops who would be trying to advance. Now, not only is the use of chemical weapons inherently wrong in any case, but it would also undoubtedly claim the lives of many innocents. As we know, the Clone Wars left many worlds in ruins, littered by demolished droids, etc. So when the battle was done and the Separatists had left, the civilians would come to retake their homes. And this was a huge risk. Moving these droid remains, or salvaging parts, or just going near them, could trigger a leak in the long dormant units, and for those airborne pathogens to seep out and infect anyone around them. This droid really is just a huge scorched earth policy. If the droid is damaged, then it causes havoc for any organics near it. And it's for this reason why many of the clones started referring to these droids as virus droids. Ultimately, I think this really shows a darker side to the Confederacy, and although we know that most of these tri-droids were not equipped with these pathogens, the fear that some of them were must have been excruciating, and it made them far more deadly, and far more of a difficult opponent to fight, as you didn't want to risk being too close to it when it did fall, just in case it was loaded with viruses. But what do you guys think of this? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, please remember to like, share and sub if you did enjoy it, it's all really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy and tick the bell for regular updates. Thanks again for watching, I really do hope that you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.